over the last two or three years, many of us have learned that you need to feed bees at times. And um, if you didn't do it in time, you most likely lost one or two of your hives and maybe even more. Uh, the last few seasons, as Finn said, one year to another is different. The last few years, you just had to feed bees at, the, at certain times and certain locations, otherwise they just wouldn't survive. Uh, have we got the... <coughs> Right, so we'll just keep it fairly simple. We'll just go through it, why you would be feeding bees, how you feed it and what you feed. So we'll just break it down um, in, in, into little sections. And I'll, I'll talk about the benefits, disadvantages of every option. There's quite a few options there. And every one of them will have an advantage and it depends on how you keep your bees, what you do. I, I'm a pensioner, so I can firstly go out to my bees anytime I want. Um, if you work and you don't get home till six o'clock at night, early spring, late autumn, it'll be dark by the time you come home. If you've got kids, you're probably going out to sports on a weekend and if it's raining, you still can't work your bees. So you're very limited and you might be looking at using different ways of feeding than a pensioner like myself. Um, the reason we feed, stimulation, that is, I know that that picture is actually from an, um, a split or a package B, uh, what they bought is not used a lot in, in, in Australia, but in America and Canada, they're big in buying packages of bees. There's a feeder in there. Stimulation is, is, can be done for different reasons that you want to stimulate your bees, but if you come out of winter and you find that one of your hives only got four or five frames of bees in it, that's obviously not very strong. You want to build that hive up as quick as possible a little bit of feeding uh, will just get that hive to... The queen will just lay out. It'll, they will think there's good conditions, there's feed coming in and they can afford to expand that brood nest. It'll generate a bit of heat in the nest and that hive will then build out a lot quicker than if you just leave it to it. Um, so that is one reason that you might want to feed your bees. And, and even if you've got a good single hive, if you plan to split your bee... Uh, Finn's just talking about splitting hives... If you've got a nice strong hive coming out in winter uh, you, and you plan to in increase your number of hives, you might want to feed even that single box just to get it to build up into a nice big strong double by you know, here in Melbourne, possibly early October. Then you've got a nice box of bees, possibly a number of frames of brood that you can then take off and use as a split. So there are different reasons you might want to stimulate that brood. Second reason I've put down is just to maintain your brood, and that became quite clear over the last few years. Your bees can go along really nice. You know, you've got nice big slabs of brood in there, lots of bees in there, but then all of a sudden honey stops coming in because there's nothing flowering, or we have two weeks of extremely cold, miserable weather, and the bees just simply can't get out there. There's no nectar coming in. Even if that hive has got quite some stores in there, some honey still in there, that hive will most likely slow down in the production of brood. And it happens a lot more than many of us ever pick up. If you, if you just make a habit of it when you go through your hive and you take out the frames, if you see a nice patch of sealed brood and maybe some eggs and young, very young larvae, but not the larger larvae that are just about to be capped over, that means there was a break in that brood and that could be, say, a week. So you have lost young bees coming out over that one week period and that'll show up in another two, three weeks. Uh, and if you look for that, you'll see that that happens quite regularly. If you have had a number of days of bad weather, they cannibalise the young larvae and they'll just start all over again. Um, so if you got a hive, especially that got a lot of brood in there and you're keen to build it up to a good strong hive and you look at the weather forecast and they're, you know, the forecast is always reliable, isn't it? They never get it wrong. Um, so if you, if you realise there's a fair chance of a week of bad weather coming up and you feel that that might just affect your hive, if you can, just put a feeder in there, whatever type of feeder you use, put two, three litres of syrup in there and that hive will keep going. Again, depends what you do, you, the time available, et cetera, et cetera. Can someone get me a glass of water, please? Um, but that is, that is an option. Your hive will survive even if you don't get that sugar syrup in there. It'll survive. It just means it's not going to build up as quick as you possibly hoped for. And 
The next one is avoiding starvation, and that is the grand finale of the whole thing. That is the bottom board. It probably doesn't come out too well, but they're just dead bees, right? And that is the time that you probably were thinking about feeding them and you just didn't get around to do it because there were other more important things to do. Um, that is a sickening feeling because you know that it is not the bee's fault. You know, look in the mirror and you're looking at the person that caused that problem. Right? Either taking off too much honey in the autumn or simply not feeding, whatever. It's, it's the beekeeper. You need to be on top of it to avoid that. Just looking at that, just keep in mind you can come across something very similar, but it's not starvation. It could be a chemical spray, especially if you're in the country. If it is a chemical spray, you quite often see bees crawling around the entrance outside the hive, as with starvation, most of the bees are dead on the bottom board and in between the frames. And another real classical sign of starvation and that you will just confirm that is starvation. If you get the frame out and you see all the bees head first in the cell and all the bums hanging out, and it's almost comical when you see that picture, and we haven't got one, I searched for one, you see all the bums hanging out, that is starvation without any doubt, no, nothing else. And again, it's the beekeeper that firstly allowed that to happen. Don't feel guilty, it happened to every one of us. The last option for the reason you might want to feed bees, and Finn's touched on that too, to do your own queen cells, even fairly good conditions. If you do it in Melbourne around October, if you want to raise queen cells and you've got a queenless hive, even, even the day before you introduce your queen cells, that is grafting the little larvae in there and get them to start it, put a jar or something in there, feed them a little bit of sugar syrup nothing really thick, just watery sugar syrup, and that just stimulates that hive, and they will build better queen cells, better chance that they will actually start more than if you just leave them to it. It's very easy to do, very quick. If you have never done queen cells, do it. It's the cheapest thing you can do in beekeeping. A little grafting tool costs you four or five dollars. You could probably buy one here today. Queens, the cups, you can buy them 20 odd cents each or something, buy 10 of them, two dollar investment. That's all you really need to play around, to pr try to produce your own queens. And it is nothing more satisfying than when you have gone through the process and after three, four weeks, you see this beautiful young queen out there and they're starting to lay. You have actually turned that little grub into a beautiful queen. Yeah, and it's just opposite from seeing starvation. Have, have a go at it. You can't lose. You can't go wrong. Um, how to feed now? There's quite a few different bits of equipment they can use. You can use. I'll go through every one of them. Um, they all got their advantages. Some of these board feeders. Can everyone hear me? Some of these board feeders got a tube that goes well into the hive, and the bees need to get in from the end to get the sugar tube in there. And there are others around. Some of them are actually open at the, the top here. Don't use them for sugar syrup. If you put sugar syrup in there and there is no other nectar around, the bees are real hungry, they'll be robbing within half an hour, and you'll have bees all over it. And if you're feeding a hive that only got three, four frames of bees in it, or a swarm, or a split, or a nuke, that'll be killed, that'll be robbed out in no time at all. So look for one that got a tube, but goes well into the hive, and the bees need to get in from the entrance. <laughs> You can make it yourself in the good old days when everyone made everything themselves. They used to make it of timber with a bit of uh, plywood at the bottom, just a, uh, it was probably about one eight or three sixteen thick, with a hole in a sit a jar on the top of it. Um, the, the other disadvantage of the board feeder is it's very small quantities. And you, you can almost put two on there. One of the advantages is if you're careful, you could possibly uh, come home at the night time and still put a new jar on there. There could be a few bees, so if you don't like to get stung, be careful, but it can be done at night, even in the dark with the torts. The top feeder is um, a real good feeder, especially in the autumn, and you need to get a lot of sugar syrup in very quick, and that is what you need to do in the autumn. You don't take a long time to get a bit of sugar syrup in. In the autumn, you need to get in as much as they want to take up as quick as possible. 
Otherwise, you stimulate the queen, the queen will start laying more and consume a lot of that sugar syrup you're feeding them. So you're defeating the purpose of feeding them. The, a couple of the benefits is that you can feed these bees by just taking the lid off any time you come home in the middle of the night after the party, whatever, take the lid off, there are no bees in that, in that top. They, they are below a screen of section, they can't get at you. So even with a torch, you take the lid off, pour another five or ten litres of syrup in there, and some of these take up to ten litres or more, uh, pour it in, top it up, and they'll be all right for another, you know, four, five, six, seven days. That is a real advantage. If you are short on storage, these things become a bit of a pain in the backside because even if you just got two hives, there's just another two boxes you need to store somewhere. You know, and you can only some, put so much in a spare bedroom. And uh, if you're lucky, you've got a big shed, it's no problem. But if you are living in a unit and you've got limited storage space and the cost of it, you usually buy the plastic container separate to the wooden box. Uh, all up, you're probably looking at 30 to 40 odd dollars, something like that, to buy the two of them together. But the benefit is you can feed a lot of sugar, sugar syrup very quick and you can do it after hours when it is dark. The frame feeder is very popular feeder. I, I, I've used the frame feeders quite a bit. Um, this is a real large one. That I think that one holds about nine litres of sugar syrup. You can get smaller ones, which are only one frame. That is a two frame. You need to take two frames out of your hive to fit that in. Uh, the single one holds about three, three and a half litres of uh, syrup. That is, if your hive is sitting level, if you've got to tilt it forward, that comes down by another litre or something. You can either feed the syrup straight into that container without that top and just put some wooden sticks in the syrup. They float in there and the bees will get point their way down and get to the syrup. The small one, the two, three litre one, they'll empty out in 24 hours. Now, that is good in the autumn if you want to get a lot of syrup in. If you do it in the spring, what they do, they take all that syrup and put it in a brood nest where the queen should be laying and they'll just simply fill it all out and stop the queen laying till they then decide to store it away on the outside of the brood's nest. You can overcome that um, by either using something what is shown there. You can buy these with, it. they call that a leather, with the two leathers. There are even some that got three in there. Oh, I'm Dutch. Dutchies don't like spending money. There's a few Dutchies here who might not agree with me. But uh, I make my own. I bought... Just a container, I think you can buy them for about $10, $8, $9. Uh, in an offcut of weather tax, the material, what you use on your bottom boards, just as an offcut, drill a 25 mil hole in it with a bit of conduit. In my previous life, I was an electrician, so there were still some offcuts around. And inside, I put a bit of uh, aluminium fly screen wire, and that gives the bees really good grip. By doing that, you're reducing it down to about 20 mil tube and only the one tube, that means there's only about, say, six, seven, eight, nine bees that manage to get to the sugar syrup, and the, the others just line up. It's a little bit like, you know, a conveyor belt. They're lining up to come down, and they fill up, and they come back up, and they just keep rotating around. You can see, you can almost see them queue up. You slow that down from, instead of emptying that out in, in about 24 hours, you slow them down, it'll take them about four or five days to empty that container. And they will not store a lot of it. They will almost consume it as they bring it up. And the advantage is they just think that they are on a bit of a honey flow. It really stimulates them. They will almost build comb when you feed like that, if you do it continuously. And they're not blocking out your queen. Uh, the other advantage of these feeders is they're really strong. You can toss them around. You can step on them. You can almost not break these things. They're easy to store, they're relatively cheap. The, the one thing, if you only got two hives, it's not an issue, but if you got more hives, usually the beekeepers take them out at the end of the spring and you put them in the shed. And as a result, next year, it probably ends up with another hive. If you've got two, mark them. Mark one A and B or one and two, and you know you put them back in the same. If you don't do that, if you've got a diseased hive and you put that back into another hive next year, you're spreading disease. 
you can sort of wash them up with a bit of uh, chlorine and hot water and wash them down. It'll you know, take care of a lot of it. Um, and, and the other thing is you need to clean them out. Uh, you get always some dead bees in there and you, every now and then you just need to take them out, just wash them down, have a, a bit of a brush and, and all that and clean them up. One more thing on these, if you feed in the spring and you only got a four five frame hive with four five frames of bees, no good having the, the, the brood's nest here and then two empty combs and then the feeder on the outside. If it is cold weather, they will not come across. They will not take up that sugar. You need to put it up against that brood's nest. Uh, one more thing, if your bees are on the point of starvation and even early spring when they're still hibernating, bees don't move freely. You might have seen it if you looked in a hive in the winter. Bees move like the, in slow motion. They personally don't fly. You shake them off a frame and they just drop on the ground like a brick. If they're really hungry and you feed them, especially if it's just the one without the leather, they'll go down in large numbers, find their way to the sugar syrup, and they struggle to get out, and a lot of them end up drowning in your sugar syrup. And you open up and you've got a big handful of dead bees in there. So really keep that in mind. Then it is better to use a feeder, of the, either a board feeder or a jar of the top. The last one, and that is the one I would use if the bees are really desperate for a feed and, and, and they are personally on the point of starvation. The Americans call that an inner board. We don't use a lot of these things here. It's just a, 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 a division board with a little hole where you can sit a jar. Now, a jar is nice, again, as I said earlier, it's a bit small. They use that up fairly quick and you need to just keep, keep topping it up, changing it over. There are bigger feeders around. I don't know, I haven't looked this morning. There are like big plastic tucks about, say, 25 centimetres across and about yay high. And the bees come up through and chew like the, the top feeder we saw earlier, similar system. Got a lid on the top and you can take the lid off and just pour more sugar syrup in there even at night with a torch. So it's a real advantage if you... Yeah, you know, if you're working and you can't get there during day, daylight hours, you can do it at the night time. Uh, th the other thing you can use that board for while we've got the picture of here, if you want to feed dry sugar, leave the jar off, the bees will come up through that hole and you can put a layer of dry sugar right across that old board, from the back, left to right, and the bees will come up and use that dry sugar. Um, and you can do something similar with a half mat. You can put a nice big half mat on there with a hole in the middle and just put a jar on it instead of having one of these inner boards. How, to, how are we going for time? You want me to speed it up? Uh, how to feed? It's a number of um, ways that you can get the sugar syrup to them. The, the plastic bag, that is the last one of the lot. The plastic bags, the advantage is it's really cheap, so the Dutch is like the plastic bag. Um, a couple of disadvantages, you can only put the, the other sandwich bags you use with the zipper on the top, they all about half a litre of sugar syrup. You can lay three of them across the top, gives you one and a half litres, still not a lot of sugar syrup. You need to get to where the bees are. It needs to be on top of the brood nest. Don't put it on top of an empty sugar uh, super. The bees will not come up to get the sugar syrup and take it down. You need to have it right on top of that brood nest. At Fanti says you cannot spread disease because you only get one or two users out of it. By then the bees will have chewed the corners out of the bag. And if you try to refill it, you can pour as much as you want, but it comes out the bottom quicker than you can pour it in. And, and that's the one thing I haven't mentioned. If you feed sugar syrup, one thing you always need to take care of and be very careful with, that you do not spill sugar syrup. That is just the worst thing you can do. Because within no time at all, the bees will find that sugar syrup and before you know it, you've got just a mass of bees all over wherever that sugar syrup is. Uh, and that is if there's nothing coming in. So be really careful. Don't let it run out of a hive. If it is a weak hive, they will kill that hive out in no time at all. They'll just rub it out and you'll end up with and dead out completely. Yep. So it's the plastic bag. I, I use it at times. Don't put your holes in the bottom because it will definitely leak. You can put holes in the top 
even with just a pin, just put a half a dozen or something holes in there. I like to just fill it up, put it in like a bladder, pinch the center of the, the bag, just lift it up slightly, have a pair of scissors and just chop a little piece out so you end up with an all about, say, 20 odd mil across, two centimeters. The bees will just come up. Mm. They will just come up and sit on top of that bladder and get to the hole and just empty it out. Uh, and, and they love it. They'll find that in no time at all. Uh, the different things we can feed. The uh, picture is not very good. It shows you I'm not very good at photography. Um, I've got the dry sugar in there. Dry sugar, very good. It's quick, easy. Uh, you don't need to prepare anything. You can just take it out of the partner's pantry somewhere if they're not watching. Um, there's all the sugar around. You can just use it there and then. But your hive needs to be in fairly good nick. Don't feed it to your hives when they're starving or hibernating. They will not come up and use it. You're just wasting your time. Second option is your sugar syrup in a bottle there. Uh, and as we said, the different ways of feeding it. The other one we haven't talked about, about that is just a block of sugar. And where I grew up, that was a normal thing to, to give to your bees in the autumn. You would make up a block of sugar almost like a half mat. So the way you make it is you mix, make sugar syrup, you just keep adding more and more and more sugar. At the end, the sugar will not dissolve. That's when you stop putting more in and that you pour that out on a newspaper or if you've got a bit of an, a plastic container, put a newspaper in there and just pour it in on that and you can tip it out when it is cold, it goes rock hard. You put it on top of where you your hive, your, uh, your brood's nest is, and they'll use it as a mat. They'll come up and cluster right on the meat, and they'll just chew that out through the winter. Put it in in the autumn, and they'll just chew through it, and in, in the springtime, you might just find a rim, or it's all gone, but they, they will use that as, as they need it. Really nice way of feeding it. Um, less chance with the dry sugar and the block of sugar of robbing or introducing, encouraging robbing than it is with dry sugar. Uh, with uh, sugar syrup. So that are the options you got there. The ratio, I've got the ratio the wrong way around. It should be 1.2 1 1 .2 sugar, so the sugar and water should be swapped around. Don't get hung up on these ratios. You know, some people really fuss over it. One thing is for sure, if you make your sugar syrup too thick, the bees struggle to take it up. And if you were to make three bags with a different mixture, you'll find that the, the, the thinner one, the 1 1.2, will get taken up. If you do it one on one and a half and another one one on two, they will clean that out last. The 1.2 one .21 is similar to the density of nectar and they will take that out first. And especially if they're hungry and starving, that is the best way to start feeding. Um, the, the, just a few things. If you start feeding for stimulation in spring, just be aware when you see that queen laying out and a brood nest gets expanded, that means they need more food to survive. They will gobble up a lot of honey and a lot of sugar syrup really quick when that brood nest expands. And before you know it, they'll be starving. So once you start feeding and there's a bit of honey in there, keep an eye on it, keep feeding till the conditions improve that they find honey and bring nectar and honey and uh, pollen in from the outside. Otherwise, you'll encourage them and then you're letting them down and you'll find all the bees dead in the bottom. So just be aware of that. Um, I think there's... Oh, I'll be so John, uh, yep. The, the, yeah, the refers them. Yeah, swap them around. But again, don't get hung up. Even if you do one-on-one, -on -one, that is easy to remember. You I just got these the wrong way around for some reason. Um, but if you do one-on-one, -on -one, you're fairly right. And don't spend time just measuring it out exactly up to a magic cup. N near enough is good enough on this. Yep. Um, th this is a completely different subject. I don't really want to go into it. Pollen supplement. It comes up at our meetings every now and then. At times, I use it. You can use that to... Uh, to stimulate your, your, your queen, your nest, your, your brood to increase. You do it when there is not a lot of pollen around. You can do it any time of the year, but especially spring early on, if you start feeding sugar syrup and you want to build that hive up to a good strong double, 
um, feed uh, a bit of pollen supplement. There are different manufacturers around. Mix it as the manufacturer instructions. They are all slightly different. Some of them will want you to put in a little bit, little bit more sugar. Some of them tell you to put icing sugar in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just follow the instructions, and you'll end up with a nice patty. Um, and the, the main thing with um, with the pollen supplement is very similar to uh, feeding sugar syrup or any other feed. You need to put that on top of your brood nest. No good to have it on top of a super. If the queen is down the bottom, they will just totally ignore it. One more thing on the pollen supplement, the small hive beetle lock these patties. If you leave them in too long, you'll come and have a look in two weeks and just where the patties are sitting on the frames, the, the hive beetle will lay in there. I pushed a button somewhere, Andrew. <laughs> uh, the hive beetle will get in there and when you lift all with a little bit what is left there and you'll see this little maggot things thanks you'll see this little maggot things everywhere just take that out put it in the rubbish dispose but it'll make a new one um, and that is what we are feeding for to get a nice strong hive young now uh, before you know it they've gone in a lit and you are possibly about a week too late to put the second box on I think that's all we had. Uh, that is a picture we took. We had some bees out on canola a few years ago. Not that we ever did any good on the canola there. It was too cold, uh, but it was just a beautiful Australian landscape. And you can see the bees all flying around with the little windmill in the middle of the paddock. Any questions? <laughs>